Today we're going to talk about defining functions. Now you've been practicing this a lot. You've had some homework assignments and some in-class assignments and a lot of programs that dealt with, de with defining functions. So we're just going to kind of break it down in today's lecture. So when you're defining a function, remember these things. A function is code that accomplishes just one task. It's going to have a name and it doesn't execute any of its code until the function is called and it can be called multiple times. So this is thus the reasons that we actually have functions. When you're defining a function, these are the things that need to be included in the header. It has to have a name, and it should have any parameters. Okay, it's not required, but if it does have parameters, it goes in the header, and it ends with a colon. And this is the things that you need to think about when you're defining a function. So what information do you need to accomplish the task, and what information will be returned? So we're not really going to concern ourselves with what happens in the middle, how does it do the task, just what does it need, and what will be returned. So that's what we're going to practice for this lecture. So in our examples, we're going to declare the function and we're going to call the function. So here's example one. Our task is to compute the larger of two integers. So what would this function definition look like? We need to give it a name. So I'm going to call this maybe um, compute larger or um, get max. And remember, I like to call my functions with some kind of a verb so that I don't use a variable name for my function name. I'm going to start it without any parameters. I'm just going to think about what does it need to accomplish the task. If I'm computing the larger of two integers, then obviously I'm going to need two integers. But this could happen in the function call, but let's just kind of assume that it's going to do one thing, and that's just compute the larger. So I'm going to put in maybe num1 and num2. So I've got the name, I've got the parameters, and I've got my colon. This is my function definition. How would I call this? Well, it is going to return something, so I'm just going to do kind of like a, a dot, dot, dot kind of thing and then it would end up with return. What is it going to return? Well, this larger. It's going to return the max. So, and sometimes max is a keyword, so I'm just going to combine it max num. Now, this is a return function. So when I do a function call, remember it has to be part of something. If I'm returning the max num, which is kind of, you know, a rule of thumb is to use this as it's the value that's going to receive the return. So it's going to be part of an assignment statement, and I'm going to use what it returns as my variable here, and then the, def the call will be get max. And since it has two parameters, in here I'm going to put two arguments, which oftentimes will be the same. They don't have to be, but that's just kind of what we've been doing. So here's our first example. Let's take a look at example number two. Once again, we're going to declare the function and call the function. Here's our task compute the smallest of three numbers. So what will my function definition look like? Well, I have to give it a name. So maybe I'm going to call it um, get min. So kind of similar. Do I need some parameters? Well, I have three numbers, so maybe I want to call it num1, num2, num3. And I'm going to end with the colon. So I declared the function. I'm not really going to be concerned with how it does that but I'm just going to kind of do my little dot, 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 and then what's going to happen is I am going to return uh, the smallest. So when I call the function, since this, since this is a return function, it needs to be part of something, so I'm going to take smallest right there. It's going to be receiving the value when I call the function get min. And I have three parameters, so here I'm going to have three arguments. So I have my function definition, and I have my function call. Okay, let's try example three. Here's my task. Check if an integer is prime and return true if it is and false if it isn't. So what will I call this function? Let's just call it um, prime num, something like that. So I want to make sure that it's different from whatever my number is. Do I need some kind of information in order to determine if a number is prime? Well, I need the integer. And I, I'm not really going to use, I could use integer, but that's probably not what my variable is called, so maybe I just call it number. And I end with my colon. 
Is it going to return something? Well, sure. So I'm going to do like my dot, dot, dots. And I'm going to return true. Or I'm going to return false. So I am going to have some kind of an if statement in here. So it's not always going to be returning true, but it is going to return something. So in my function call, it has to be assigned something. So maybe it is prime equals, and then prime So just remember, if it has some kind of return, it has to be part of an assignment statement. Now I could use this, since it's a true false, I could use it in a condition, you know, with a loop. There's lots of different options. So this is just one option. Here's some, another way I could call it. If is prime, no, if, and then I'm going to put prime number. So this is a function call right here. This is my condition, true, false. So that's another way that I could call this function. Now let's take a look at example number four. Here's my task. Compute the balance of an account given the initial balance, interest rate, and years of earning interest. So I need a name for this function. And let's just call it compute balance. Nice and descriptive, and I'm going to make sure that this would not be a variable name. Do I need some information to accomplish this? I need the um, initial, the interest rate, and the years. Okay. And M with the colon. So it might look something like this. And is it going to return something? Let's do a little dot, dot, dot. It's going to return the balance. Oops. So in my function call, this is a return statement, so it has to be part of something. I'm going to do balance equals, and I'm going to call the function compute balance. And then I'm going to pass in my argument. to our next example. Generate a random number between 1 and n. Okay, well, what can we call this function? Let's just call it um, get random. Do I need some information? You might say no, you're used to generating random numbers, but n is kind of something that could be different each time. So let's pass in n. And what am I going to return? Well, I'm going to return my random number. So when I call this, it has to be part of a statement. So I could call it random num equals um, get random with n. Uh, or I could use it lots of different ways. So that's one way to call it. Let's take a look at one more example that's going to be a little bit different. Now we're going to print the initial balance and current balance of a savings account. So I might call this print results. Okay, so we've kind of done this before. Do I need some information to print? So I need the initial and I need the current. Am I going to return anything? Not this time. So no return. What does that mean when I call it? It means that the function call is going to be by itself. It's not going to be part of anything. So I'm just going to say print results and I still have some arguments. So it doesn't really matter if it's a return function or void function. Either one can have parameters and arguments or not. But what you need to remember is how to call them. So when I do have a return function, it's got to be part of a statement. And when I call a void function, it just stays by itself. So things to remember, each function should just do one thing, not more than one thing. So it shouldn't ask and calculate or calculate and print, just one thing. If you are returning something, then it should only return one value. Now Python lets you get away with that, but just it's good practice. Functions should only return one thing, because most of the times that is the case. An avoid function call is its own statement. A return function call must be part of something. So in class, for your review assignment, you're going to be practicing this. You might want to go over these examples again, try them on your own, and see if you have any questions. If you do, write them down in your notes.